What up everybody? Hey, it's time to do a new video. I'm going to do another product and manufacturer spotlight. And as I said in the uh, video that I did for Protec Knives out of California, I'm going to be really particular about the companies that I pimp on my channel. Uh, the main reason is I have to actually own, use, and approve of these products. Uh, anything you see me review in one of these videos or talk about, I paid for myself. I don't personally know anybody with these companies. When I post a video, I send them an email so they'll know. Uh, other than that, I don't have any contact with them and I don't get any product from them. So I've got nothing to gain from pimping anybody. I just want to do it because I've found that these companies and their products are very high end, very high quality. Uh, for your money and I just want to pass that along to people and that's what this is all about all these knife channels is helping people out so uh, of course you can see who we're going to talk about is SE Knives uh, this company it's an interesting company they didn't start out as a knife maker uh, in fact they don't make knives now um, this company was started by Jeff Randall and Mike Perrin somewhere in the late 90's around 97 I think uh, the name of the company is Randall's Adventure and Training. Uh, now, these guys have set up a school. Uh, they're under contract or have a contract with the Peruvian Air Force. They have a school of jungle survival because they have a lot of jungle. And if you're flying, there's a good chance if you ever go down, it's going to be in the jungle, I suppose. So... Uh, the guys, Jeff and Mike, they hooked up with the Peruvian Air Force at this school, the School of Jungle Survival, and they do training classes there uh, under the Randall's Adventure and Training uh, business name. So they did that for years. I don't know how many years, and this is some pretty serious stuff, guys. This is going out into the actual jungle with your knives and surviving using them. You're going to learn how to skin an alligator with your knife. If you don't believe me, just go to their website. And everywhere all over the internet, there's been all kinds of people that have gone. And, man, they use these knives for everything. They chop down trees with knives, guys. Uh, they are doing some serious, serious, I've only got what's on my back type survival training in an actual jungle. And, you know, it's a very serious company. Uh, they've trained military, law enforcement, uh, civilians, um, security companies. Uh, they've taken a crew from Hollywood, movie crews that have to shoot movies in the jungle in for training. And um, they're a very highly respected company. Now, I don't know how long they did this before they started making knives, and they didn't make them themselves. Uh, the first was the RTAC. Uh, the big knife, and uh, it was at first made by a company named Wicked Knife Company. I don't know anything about them, whether it's a large custom shop or a small production facility, but I do know that soon Ontario Knife Company picked up the license to do the RTAC and then further license and for the Rat Knives series, um, which had, you know, the, the same models that we see for the most part under SE those designs now they made them for uh, five years or so and uh, besides the fixed blade knives they do the rat one and the rat two folder and they still actually do the folders all they they don't they do not they do not any longer manufacture the fixed blades i'm sorry guys i'm <laughs> tongue-tied um now the fixed blades are manufactured by Rowan Manufacturing. They're out of Idaho Falls, Idaho. They're a, I've seen video of their shop. It looks like a fairly high production uh, volume, high volume production. Um, everything I saw was very uh, ultra precise machinery, CNC stuff. It looked like a, a very well laid out, very well maintained, uh, high precision, high volume production shop. Um, everything I've seen out of SE products, the fit and finish everywhere is great. The grinds are great. The heat treat is great. 
uh, if you ever see anybody in a video break an SE knife, they are actually pushing that knife to the limits of what it can do and breaking it. And it doesn't matter because it's still covered under warranty. That's how good Rowan is. They have a unlimited, unrestricted, transferable, lifetime warranty on them. It doesn't matter if you break it on purpose. You know, they hope you don't. But under regular use, hard use, uh, the guys online that do abuse tests and failure tests, it's still covered under all that. It's transferable. It doesn't matter if 10 people own that knife. It's transferable for life. It goes with the knife. Um, and like I say, their fit and finish is fantastic. Heat treat is fantastic. And you've got that warranty. Um, now, you may have your favorites in the SE line. Uh, there's a lot of models that are close in size and overall features to a similar model but there's some differences that really affect performance and that's something like between the SE3 and the SE4. Um, of course the 3 and the 4 being for overall you know blade length and when you go from one to the other, it's the same design in an inch overall longer blade length uh, with the same handle, but you change to a different thickness of blade stock, and that radically alters how that knife performs. Uh, somebody like the thicker, heavier duty uh, four model blade stock, uh, it's at 3 16th inch, and some people like the thinner three stock which is in one eighth inch i prefer the three uh you're gonna see overall across all of my choices out of essie's line i went with the thinner blade stock uh, i chose the six at three sixteenths inch stock over the five at the quarter inch stock and then of course the home gloss for its size is already in a fairly thin stock um with a uh, what's the blade length ten and a half inches to the handle scale and three sixteenths in, uh, inch stock. So the reason I choose the thinner stock, these knives are flat ground, and the thinner stock on a flat grind, a full flat grind, gives a thinner edge. Is basically my reasoning. It is going to be capable of more precise. Um, a thinner edge, a more slicey edge for what it is. Now, for those guys that think that you need the thicker blade stock, if you're doing something with this knife and you stop and go, oh shit, I uh, wish I had that four right now with the 3 16 stock, it's time to stop using that knife. Okay, stop using it right there. Get your bigger knife and use it. It's going to be more efficient at anything you have to do that is going to offer that higher end stress and strain and weight on it and flexation. It's in the thicker stock. It has a longer blade with more capacity of use, bigger handles, better to hold on to. All right. When you get to the point where this knife it feels like it's not enough don't keep using it you switch over to your bigger knife now this is in the same blade stock as this knife 3 16 inch but you're looking at a 10 and a half inch blade uh, to the the uh, handle scales here uh, that's a lot of weight behind that 3 16 and the weight behind the 3 16 thin stock with a fairly thin edge across that wide blade with a flat grind. Um, man, the Hoon Gloss is just one of the best chopping large knives that I have ever seen or used in my life. It has a reputation online for that. And it is well deserved. So, uh, you know, I think with this range, I can cover just about everything. And we're going to do individual reviews of these products. Uh, this is just sort of an SE um, uh, manufacturer spotlight, a little bit showing what I have in my collection, and sort of sort of an introduction to. Uh, my up-and-coming videos that will be testing uh, 
uh, these knives. I'm going to try to get the camera outside and actually film some of the testing. I'm not going to film much of it, guys. Uh, you don't want to see me making feather sticks and uh, battening these knives through little logs and maybe chopping on a fallen tree. Um, everybody has done that in their videos. I'm going to try to get out and do a little more things that might be more common. Those things will be common if you have to prep out wood if you're camping. But what if you're at home? Uh, what, if, what if you have to cut something or do something around the house? I'm going to try to get some use in on these, although I don't have any idea what I'm going to do around the house with the hoon gloss. Uh, that thing may not be big enough to get any work done. I just don't know, guys. But I'm going to try to get that up. And I want you guys to go out and buy, you know, a freaking hundred of these SE knives. I don't care. Just buy a bunch of them. They're such well-respected product from, a, you know, a, just a really interesting company. Uh, that specializes in jungle survival training in Peru, and I think they actually do a little training across the U.S. now also. Um, this company specializes in that. They don't manufacture any knives themselves. Uh, they've always been with a good partner as far as getting their designs manufactured. They're with a fantastic partner right now in Rowan uh, out of Idaho. Uh, their designs, we all know the designs, and I'm going to talk about them later in the videos. It's just a fantastic company. And on top of everything, the company, the product, you've got that warranty, guys. I'd be hard-pressed to, to, just off the top of my head, recall another company that's got that type of warranty where they don't, they don't even care. They don't even care what you did. If you're doing a video for YouTube and you're making it fail, they'll replace it. They don't want to do that, of course, but they will. Because they say, overall, their consumers, their purchasers, uh, their, the people that buy their niche product is overall a very honest um, purchaser base. That's what they say. And they lose very little on those warranties because the product is so damn good anyway. All right, guys. Hey, uh, thanks for watching. Hey, all my new subs, thank you very much. Stick around. I try to do a video every day or every other day, depending on how my work schedule is. And, um, you know, as long as I've got something in front of me to review, I'm probably going to talk about it because I'm full of shit. Anyway, guys, uh, God bless all of you. Thank you for taking the time to watch, and we'll talk to you later.